Was there a time in your youth when you and your friends maybe had collectible cards that you traded? Or maybe you collected something else that you traded with your friends? How did that work? You would always try to trade up. That is, you'd try to take maybe a baseball card you didn't value very highly, and then you would try to trade it for another card that you thought was more valuable. You wanted to get as much as possible out of that trade. People who play the stock market are basically doing the reverse, right? Hoping that the stock you buy isn't worth much now, but later on uh, it will be worth more when you'll be able to trade it for more money than you bought the stock for. So even though with stocks you're trying to predict the future value of what you'll get, the principle is still the same. You want to get as much as possible out of the trade. I remember watching a parent with a child. They both were about to have popsicles and the child gave her popsicle a lick and then said to her mom, yeah, I don't like this flavor. And the mom then said, well, would you like to trade? And so they did. And what the child didn't know, but I did watching this was that the mom preferred the popsicle she had originally, but it was the mother's idea for her to trade down to give away what was valuable to her. Now, why would she do this? Because she loved her daughter. And so she willingly made a trade that was to the other person's advantage, not hers. Why make a trade where you're getting less out of it? Because you love the person and you want that person to be better off than before. The Bible describes a trade, one we might call the greatest trade of all. It's sometimes called the great exchange. Paul describes it this way in 2 Corinthians. He says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Did you catch the trade? Paul is talking about Jesus and how Jesus had no sin, but he took all of our sins on himself. What Jesus did have, though, was righteousness, and he gave that righteousness to you and me. So the trade, our sins for Jesus' righteousness. Jesus takes our sins, and so in God's eyes, we no longer have any sin. Jesus gives us his righteousness, and so in God's eyes, we look righteous and holy and perfect. And so God treats us as someone righteous and holy and perfect. He gives us heaven and a heavenly inheritance and a name in his family. And what did Jesus get out of this deal? When he was on the cross, God looked at him and saw someone with no righteousness and instead someone with all the sins of the world. And there on the cross, God treated Jesus like someone with no righteousness and instead as someone who had committed every sin in the world. On the cross, God treated Jesus as a sinner, punishing him for our sins and taking the ultimate punishment for sin on himself, death. Why would Jesus do that for you and me? Why would he make such a ridiculous trade where he gets nothing out of it and we get everything? Because he loves us. He loves us so much, he would do whatever it takes for us to not be separated from him on the cross. For us, that's a great exchange. What does that mean for you now? Well, when God looks at you, he still sees you clothed in that righteousness. And so he sees his holy and precious child, and he still treats you that way. He promises he will never leave you or forsake you, and he is working all things out for your good. All because Jesus traded you into the family. And after his death, Jesus rose victorious and now reigns with God. This Jesus who gave his life for us, he now, we now will get to be with him forever. Again, that's a great exchange. So this is a simple way of explaining your faith to someone. So memorize the words of 2 Corinthians 5.21. God made Jesus who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in Jesus we might become the righteousness of God. And when you have an opportunity to share your faith, just talk your friend through the great exchange. Jesus took my sin and he gave me his righteous, perfect life. Let's pray. Dear God, as we meditate this week on the basics of the gospel, I thank you for making your plan of saving me so clear. You took my sins and you gave me your righteousness. 
and now I'm your righteous and holy child, and you will never leave me, all thanks to what you did for me on the cross. Let me remember daily what an awesome trade you made just for me. Amen. Shepherd is whose goodness fails.